with EVs beginning to take the market by storm. What does it actually cost to run them? I'm Rob Cooling, and we're going to find that out. Now, my personal cost that I've experienced in my time with EVs was going from a petrol bill of £240 a month, and it's suddenly dropping to an electricity bill of £70 a month, which was about my first two years of driving an electric car. But nowadays, I've switched over to one of the new emerging energy companies that are offering far cheaper rates of energy, primarily aimed at EV drivers charging overnight. So whereas I used to pay 15 pence a kilowatt, which is a fairly normal amount to pay for home electricity, I now pay just five pence per kilowatt hour at night time to charge my EV, which has taken that monthly figure down from 70 pounds a month to about 30 pounds a month from the original 240 for petrol. That's a very significant saving. And that is what offsets the higher upfront costs. Now a modern EV with the capability of doing about 200 miles is going to set you back about £25,000. But it brings with it a potential 70%, maybe even more, reduction in your running costs, which for a driving instructor should mean a good reduction of two to £3,000 a year, if not more, in running costs. But the good news is that the new batteries are significantly stronger and more resilient than any of the previous generation ones. Well, an EV battery, is now typically warranted for about eight years and 100,000 miles, with the predicted lifespan of a modern battery exceeding 20 years. Degradation rates are now reckoned to be at no more than 10% capacity loss per 100,000 miles, which means if you buy a 300 mile range EV, after 100,000 miles, it's still gonna have a range of 200 and 70 miles. And beyond that, you've still got a very reliable car. If we try to compare against mobile phone battery development, well, we know we've seen very rapid, very dramatic development in mobile phone battery technology in terms of its capacity and its ability to charge quicker and quicker. And of course, the same level of development is and will be true for electric cars. Although, while we're talking about that comparison between mobile phone batteries and EVs, it's worth pointing out that electric car batteries are very different to mobile phone batteries, and they are far more stronger, more resilient, more long-lasting. It's worth pointing out that everything degrades. Combustion cars degrade with time. An engine will not return the same miles per gallon 100,000 miles into its life as it would have done when brand new. Not to say that combustion cars can't do hundreds of thousands of miles, but I'd imagine they need a little bit of uh, tender loving care and patching up to keep them going. There are plenty of examples of EVs with hundreds of thousands of miles on their batteries and still going strong. I intend to keep my next electric car long-term with an intention to run it far beyond 100,000 miles. Now, another nice benefit is the reduced servicing and maintenance costs due to EVs possessing approximately 90% less moving parts, resulting in cheaper maintenance and cheaper servicing, with a service costing about 70 pounds. EV batteries are typically warranted for eight years and 100,000 miles, with a predicted lifespan on the new technology exceeding 20 years. What you can often find is that the lease cost of an EV added on to its monthly electricity bill is often the same or less than the lease cost of a traditional car added on to its monthly fuel bill. You have to look at the savings hiding behind those upfront prices. Now, although driving an EV for myself definitely works out cheaper than driving a combustion car, even if I had to pay more to drive electric, I would. We are all used to the concept of paying more for a better product. And if I've got to pay more, I will, because I'm not going back to combustion. But I don't. It's cheaper and it's fantastic. Now I can talk about my personal experience with insurance. Now I've found that uh, insurance has been, for me, 
the same as it was with a combustion car. I've not really noticed any significant changes. But of course, insurance is always difficult because it's very unique to the individual and their circumstances. There are some who have experienced increased rates of insurance when switching over to electric cars, but not for myself. Now, currently, EVs are um, tax-free in terms of vehicle excise duty, but I would describe this as an early adopter benefit. It's not something that can last going forwards into the future, because rightly so, the government will need to generate revenue, which is being lost through plummeting sales of petrol and diesel, so that they can generate that revenue, but is much needed to maintain the infrastructure going forwards. Most likely, we are going to see some kind of mileage tax system making its appearance across the next decade. And it's about time we modernized the way we tax our cars. And this allows for a much more flexible, much more dynamic way of taxing cars with different vehicles taxed at different rates and the possibility that we can even tax different rates at different times of day, allowing for a way of trying to encourage and regulate traffic flow. Now, of course, EVs are exempt from city congestion charges, and we are going to be seeing more and more cities beginning to discourage combustion cars as we excitingly and finally move towards a future where we can breathe clean air in our cities something I'm very much looking forward to. I often hear people talking about delaying purchasing an electric car because the next generation of technology is just round the corner. And it's true, the pace of the development is phenomenal. As electric motors and battery technology leap from one breakthrough to the next breakthrough. And across the next decade, we are going to see radical development in the technology, unlocking all kinds of new potential and new possibilities. Clinging on to a outdated combustion technology cannot offer this level, this rate of development. For me personally, I'm now buying the EV, which will be my very, very long-term EV. Because the right time to buy the car is when the car meets your needs. Now with me personally, in this 300 mile range EV, charge is plenty fast enough for me. This more than meets my needs. So even though I could wait a couple of years and hang on for the next generation of technology to appear, for me, the right time is now. However, you have to weigh up your unique scenario. If you cannot have a home charger and you require your electric car to recharge in the same kind of timescales, as you're used to from your petrol or diesel car? The answer is wait. An electric car might not be your next car, but it could well be the one after. We are well on our way to electric cars with 400, maybe even 500 mile ranges, and the ability to recharge in 15 minutes or less. If you are in the 40% of the population who cannot have a home charger. Then just like every internal combustion engine car, you will be reliant on a public network. It is patchy, but constantly improving. The UK currently has in excess of 18,000 chargers, expanding at a rate of approximately 500 new connectors being added to the network every month. BP and Shell are now heavily involved in the expansion of the UK charging network. If you are in the 60% of the population who can have a home charger, then a home charger will take care of the vast bulk of your charging needs and the novelty of having your own little fuel station on the side of your house never seems to wear off. Every morning, I wake up to a fully charged car ready to go. No longer do I have to nip to the petrol station on my way to my first lesson. EVs have the advantage of destination charging, meaning you charge where you arrive. I often charge at the local swimming baths, Tesco's, Morrison's, Asda, camping sites, hotels, to name but a few of the places where I have charged at destination. When I bought my Nissan Leaf in 2017, the range was approximately 120 miles. Just one year later, when my wife bought her Nissan Leaf, that range had jumped up to about 170 miles. 
And now, two years down the line, the range of EVs is now going into about 250 miles. We will be seeing 400 and 500 mile range EVs appearing on the market across the next five years or so. This is a very rapidly evolving technology. Any stats or complaints we have about now will not apply in the next few years. We will continue to see those prices steered downwards. Now a 200 mile range capable EV is going to set you back about 25,000 pounds, but it brings with it a potential 70% or more reduction in your running costs, which for a driving instructor should mean a good two to 3,000 pounds a year reduction in annual running costs, if not more. Thank you for watching the video. Do hope you have learnt about and enjoyed our video about electric cars. It would be great if you could offer your own comments and thoughts on electric cars in the comments section below. And do watch the next video. If you have enjoyed this video, please do subscribe for more content and maybe give us a like. I'm Rob Cooling for Get Driving.